Wissonoming. Oh, I hate this neighborhood because it's a hard one. Wissonoming. Okay, there we go. You guys, it's one, sometimes I got to say it slow, and sometimes I just got to say it fast. Pull it off like a Band-Aid. Wissonoming, Philadelphia. Go oh, and Forrest Scoot. And today, we're going to scoot on. Oh, I, now I can't say scoot. It's over. Well, it was nice doing the YouTube thing. It's time to hang it up. I can't say basic words. Wissanoming is a neighborhood in, oh, I would say it's the beginning of Northeast Philadelphia. I wouldn't really say it is. But technically, if you're going by signs on streets, uh, I'm not driving all the way driving all the way down there, but if you see, oh, it's a good thing I'm doing this at nighttime. There's a little bridge over there, and if you go past that bridge, if you look above it, it says, Welcome to Northeast Philadelphia. And every time I see that, I go, that's not Northeast Philadelphia. That's Bridesburg. So, no go. New. No. Is it improved? I don't know. Sunoco used to be a uh, Sunoco used to be a uh, 7-Eleven and now it's a Sunoco. Let's see what's inside the new store that used to be a 7-Eleven. I tell you what, I actually hate it, this fucking 7-Eleven. Let's try not to curse. Let's, we're going to try. Uh -oh. oh, you're closed. Never mind. Never mind. I see. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry. You're not even coming here anyway. I don't care. I got it. I was just... We're out of here. That's how bad things are? I, I, I don't, I don't want to make... All right. That's how bad things are? Stores, like, they lock the front door and... Uh... They decide, it's like a velvet rope kind of. They decide if you're cool enough to get in the store or not. There's a, there's a few bars that do that in the Kensington area too. Can I get this in? This is the guy. Man, you put in a long day. You work, you're here all day, right? Like 12 hours, god damn. How many socks you selling? How many socks you selling? Yeah, but school, when they go back to school. Uh, right. One day. But you're, you, they can't say you're not trying. Yeah, working 12-hour days. That's what he sits on the corner. He sells trash bags and socks. Uh-oh, there they are. The chaos. The chaos crew getting ready to make babies cry. <laughs> right, hold on, stop. Let's do the pocket checks. I got really bad OCD. We got the, where's the key? There's the key. There's the wallet. There's the phone. And the camera's being held up in the thing. Okay. Yeah, I just realized I'm one of those real crazy OCD people. Hello, friend. Um, it takes me like eight minutes to leave the car. It's getting bad. But at least I know it's an issue. Doesn't I mean it doesn't mean much because I just because I know it's an issue doesn't mean I can fix it. Oh, this is uh what school is this? Do you know what school this is? I don't know what school this is. Uh, I do know every time I go by here, there's always a kid playing basketball. I guess it's not dark out now. But there's usually kids always on this hoop. I see this hoop get used more than hoops in playgrounds, like like actual factual playgrounds. It's about nine o'clock at night. Uh, yeah, this was a, no, well, you know what? Maybe it comes out nice at nighttime. It should, it's a decent camera I use. People ask me all the time what camera I use. Uh-oh, off-road scooting. I, I use a DJI Pocket Osmo 2. Uh, I absolutely love it. Um, get the warranty. They're very fragile, like eggs. Get the two-year warranty. But um, I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm like Wreck-It Ralph, I guess. 
Uh, I, I know what it is. I don't treat it. I just treat it like I, I had a $50 GoPro when I started this channel. And I, I, I treat this camera like it's a $50 GoPro, not like it's uh, the creator kit's 500 bucks. The camera itself's 350 Okay, that's well, anyway, so people ask me. And then how I use it on the scooter, see, I got my hand here and hand here. I have a strap that I strap it on my school bag. I have a little school bag I wear. People call them backpacks, not me. I call them school bags. Um, and I strap the strap that Velcros to the strap. And I put the camera in there and I, I screw it in with like a grip. And then we go. And then the camera itself has a, it's on a gimbal, so it sways. And it, it kind of looks smooth. Wissanoming Park. We're in Wissanoming now. We're going to be going to Wissanoming Park. Um, there are, there is so much history in this little section of Philadelphia. Uh, we're going to be coming up to a street called Frankfurt Ave. Now, Frankfurt Ave is near Kensington Ave, and I drive past that part a lot. But this part of Frankfurt Ave uh, is near the Frankfurt train station. This is Wissanoman Park. What if I told you something you probably do every day? Something you do every day well i mean i don't know it depends on how much of a uh um i don't know uh, is it dark here it depends it depends on what kind of phone you have but if the very first photograph of a human being oh did i tell you not that right book reports uh-oh the first um the first man to take a photograph of himself uh-oh lived in this park uh his last name was cornelius cornelius uh oh ooh, i'm thinking robert but that let's just go with cornelius mr cornelius neilis oh that's a tough one boy the tongue i might have had a stroke anyway so he lived here now this guy uh his, his father was an immigrant and um, he designed the plate or helped design the plate to take the first photograph in the United States. And the first photograph taken in the United States was taken of Central High School in, uh, in Philadelphia. So that was like the first photograph in the United States was Central High School in Philadelphia. So like a few years later, after he does that one photo, he goes, you know what? I like taking pictures. I wonder what would happen if I turned this camera around they got this fountain going that's for that's, that's like a dog bath um so yeah so then he took um a photograph of himself uh and, and if i edit this video at all i will have that picture pop up and that is the first portrait of a human being uh, either in the United States or in the world. I'm fucking scared. I, I I am terrified right now. This is. You know, let's kick this fucker in high gear. Oh no, that the lights off. God damn it! Now we're dead. Oh no. And these trees are old, and the estate. Oh, oh I should have. I should have paid a... Oh, where am I? Oh, it ends. Oh, it ends. Oh, I'm not being chased. Why am I... <laughs> there we go. So, yeah. So that's the, the history of the selfie starting here in Philadelphia. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. This street, Frankfurt Ave, used to be called the King's Highway and was originally an Indian footpath. I meant to say Native American, but I was born in the 70s. I slip up sometimes. So uh, this was a, a Native American foot trail, and this was a mile make marker. Uh, I believe it dates back to like the 1800s, right? Around there sometimes. But something cool about this street, George Washington, when he was going to become president, he was chilling in Philadelphia for a bit, or maybe even Virginia, and he had to get to New York. So he took this street, he took the uh, 66 trolley, all the way down to Knights Road, and then after that he hopped on the regional rail. I know what he did is he rode his horse 
down this street, which is Frankfurt Ave, where our cop's coming. Um, but pretty much every founding father uh, rode on this street. John Adams, uh, there was a, 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 a hotel called the Jolly, Jolly Time Inn. Damn, that sounds close enough to be right. So there was a bar called the Jolly Time Tavern. Ooh, something like that. And uh, John Adams would hang out there. Thomas Jefferson, like one of the first times he ever read the Declaration of Independence publicly happened on this street. It's now uh, a parking lot of a, of a former dirty movie theater, which is now a daycare. There's a little football history on Frankfurt Ave. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, before they were the Philadelphia Eagles, they were the Philadelphia Steagles. And before they were the Philadelphia Steagles, they were the Frankfurt Yellow Jackets. This bus just scared the shit out of me. Is it a bus? Is it a trolley? That, my friend, is a bus trolley. Uh... <laughs> All right, so the Philadelphia Eagles were called the Frankfurt Yellow Jackets, and in the oh, it, before World War II, uh -huh, pre World War II, they played around here, and uh, they were called the Frankfurt Yellow Jackets. They had, I think, back in like 2005 or 2006, the Eagles wore this ugly blue and yellow jacket, blue and yellow. Jersey. I'm not sure if that was like a replica of the Frankfurt Yellow Jackets cause it, or if it was the Philadelphia City flag. But it was the ugliest goddamn jersey. I don't think the Yellow Jackets had ugly jerseys. I'm friends with people in the Frankfurt Historical Society. And I know they have some Frankfurt Yellow Jacket stuff. I should go maybe before football season. And if you ever want to help out like a historical charity like if you want to help out people who are trying to preserve the history of philadelphia i really i my favorite society is the frankfurt historical society because the, the people are nice and, and that's all but the, the history of frankfurt is really really important shit and like i'm well, not sure well, yeah you know i'm gonna curse it, it really is important shit and um that is where the stadium was because that used to be a car dealership. I'll tell you. So what they have is like the, Frankfurt was a, an important hub of the Civil War and, and people would meet at this on this street on Frankfurt Avenue. They would meet here at a hotel down a little bit and they would get, get told where they were being deployed and they have drums from the Civil War. It's like they, they really have important shit that really needs to be preserved. So if you ever think about donating to a historical society uh check out my friends at the frankfurt historical society so yeah the, the eagles used to play there they were the steagles for one season the steelers and the eagles uh combined teams uh and that was because of i think world war ii oh i'm almost 100 on that but don't, still are you you got a pen in your hand are you about to write a book report put that shit down my friend don't you dare but the eagles and the steelers were a team and um, it was because of World War II, they, had, they didn't have enough players. So they were the, the Steagles. And uh, um, I don't think they did very well. Like, I know they didn't win a championship. Did the Yellow Jackets win a championship? I think they might have. Or maybe they didn't. That's good. That's something we can all Google. Somebody wants to Google and write the answers. I love you guys who actually do do that. Sometimes I'll drive past places. I'll drive past a house that's on sale, and I'll say, hey, this house is for sale. Somebody look for the price. And uh, usually every time I do that, somebody somebody comes up with the answer. I really... Uh... And every time I ask the price of a house and I find out the answer, every time I go, what? That much? Every time I ask about a house near Kensington Ave... Um, it's always like over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So that's it. We got Philadelphia Eagle history, photograph history. 
Would I go to a sushi place in this neighbor? I, you know, I, I really hate to be that way, but I, uh, I, uh, I like to go. I like to be uppity when, uh, when I go to a sushi place. Let's see. Would I go to sushi here? Ah. You know what? I, I take that back. You know what I do? I, I eat. Um, I don't know if I can get go to a sushi place that has chicken wings. I uh, oh no, that's not true. That's not true. I, I every time I catch myself in the line, I buy supermarket sushi, and they make fried chicken right next to the goddamn supermarket sushi. So I'm not better than anyone. Matter of fact, I'm a sorry. I, you know, I'm going to come back tomorrow. I'm going to feed the family there. All right. Well, listen. It was real. It was fun. Some would say it was real fun. I really appreciate you taking the scooter re- report. Sure. Why not? Scooter ride with me. Uh, so if you like this video, do me a favor. Hit the thumbs up. And while you're at it, hit subscribe. Don't forget to check out my merch. My merch. It's fire. And if you want to help me out, there's a link below to every video to my Patreon. That's the original Chickie and Pete's restaurant. Chickie and Pete's. Uh, it, it's a little corner. It was a little corner bar. And then uh, one day the guy said, uh, hey, where's the old bay seasoning? And the guy said, here they go. go yeah, give me some French fries. All right, and then he got the old bay seasoning, and he dumped he dumped uh, the old bay seasoning on French fries, and he said, "Yo, do me a favor, give me a cup of white American cheese, melt that." And that's what they did. They melted the American cheese. They put it in a cup. French fries, old bay seasoning, white American cheese. He get he gets fifteen dollars for a bag, like a little cup of French fries, and they're good. They're good. They're good. That's Chickie and Pete's. Um, I, 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 they're cheaper at the restaurants. I think they're like eight bucks. It's good. Dude. It's a good bar. It's a, it's a little, if you go here, I'll tell you what, if you got, if you're not doing anything like on a Saturday afternoon at three, as long as there's not like a big sporting event, it's, it's an awesome place to go. No one's ever there. And especially in the summertime. Um, Oh, I'm doing the ending. Oh, so if you made it this far, I want to let, you got to let me, oh, I got, oh, Bulking is hard. If you made it this far in the video, I want to let you know you are part of a prestigious club. You are now part of the All The Way Club. The most prestigious club on the internet. So if you made it this far, do me a favor. Hit the thumbs up. And while you're at it, hit subscribe. Don't forget to check out my merch. My merch is fire. And if you want to help me out, there's a link below with every video to my Patreon. Not doing anything on Sunday morning? Join me for a cup of coffee here, live, on YouTube. And when I turn around, you will be looking at the Dirty Devon. There it is, a $2 movie theater. Thomas Jefferson did not read the Declaration of Independence at this theater. He read it at the Dirty Movie Theater about two miles down. Well, make sure you hit like and subscribe, and I'll sail with you later. Isn't this place awesome? It's like a time capsule. Doodles!